checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. There's a lot of injuries that we need to yeah. get into. And, you know, there are a lot of injuries in WWE as well, but there's a lot of injuries in AEW right now. So, first, it started actually like a week ago when Riho was wrestling Lady Frost, and Riho tried a crossbody to the outside, and I don't know if Lady Frost was just, like, too far away or what the situation was. Dave said this was a perfectly normal move, and he is absolutely wrong. Yeah, I really uh, thought that was insane. Riho was nowhere near her. She did a high cross to, like, Lady Frost's legs, which is not how you're supposed to do it, and uh, fell on the ground and broke her wrist because she, she did not get short. caught. She either, yes, she fell short. That's it. when Dave is saying that, yeah, people do this all the time. It's usually dives to the outside. It, it's not the same thing. I don't well, know it's when you get that. caught. I mean, if you get caught, everything is fine. If you don't get caught. <laughs> and you come up short. And here's the thing. Your arm. Sometimes people don't get caught, but they're not expecting to get caught. For example, when Charlotte does that moonsault off the post to the floor, she's not expecting to get caught. No. She's doing a backflip and landing on her feet. Riho was expecting to get caught, wasn't caught, and thus she wasn't expecting to land and broke her wrist. So she is injured. And then, also on a crossbody, Hikaru Shida was facing Sky Blue, and this was another one, you know? And again, it's the high cross. You know, the high cross, you've got to go out, okay? You've got to go out. This was like straight up and straight down onto Sky Blue, there's no easy way to catch that, and she ended up breaking her foot or her ankle, sky blue. So now she's out of action for a while. And because the way it was set up and the camera, not only did it hurt, it looked terrible. So it wasn't even like something spectacular. Again, that's just, it was just brutal, and I feel bad for her. And we've got Dalton Castle, who got knocked out by a Roderick Strong jumping knee. And Tony Khan, and actually, you know, this is this is you know to his credit, we we interviewed Tony Khan a couple of weeks ago, and one of the questions we had was about injuries, and how come these injuries are always secret? You know, these people they just vanish, and it turns out they're injured, but like nobody says anything about it, and you know, he said, well, you know, some people don't want the injury public, and you know, I was like, we don't need to make the injury. The actual, but like at least say that a person is injured. And that's what they did with Dalton Castle. Dalton Castle is out, he said, uh, this is Tony Khan, for the rest of the year. Ouch. So I don't know if that's just a concussion, if he also broke an orbital bone or some bone in his face or uh, what the situation is, but he is out of action for all of 2024. So that sucks. Then we've got J.D. Drake, who we talked about a while ago. He injured himself. Remember that was that match where he hurt his foot, and then he still managed to fight his way through and do that moonsault, and the place just went haywire for that? Well, turns out he has got a, uh, I think a torn Tendon. ligament in his foot. Yeah. So he's out of action for a while. Torn ligament, which could be a while. So obviously best wishes to him as well. And Jay White. Jay White, uh, they said he was injured on television, which at first I presumed was just a storyline. But he is hurt. He hurt his foot in the match with Hangman. And we've been told, likely, he won't be out too long. So it's not like a, you know, some of these, it's not like Dalton Castle was going to be out at the end of through the rest of 2024. He should be back fairly soon. But also, apparently, a broken foot or a foot injury of some sort. So anyway, uh, more after the break, Observer Live. Right on the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Old Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Old here. Mike Sempervivi. I am. Haggard, too. Yes. Oh, boy, are you ever. How much of the G1 did you see? None? None. Has but... anybody seen any of the G1? <laughs> I've kept up with it. Crying but out loud. Yesterday I asked yet. Dave, he hadn't seen anything except for the, the Takeshita match. I was with my family all weekend. There's only so much I could watch, for heaven's sakes. And I got, I, I'm got caught up on it. I know what's going on. I just have not seen any of it yet. Well, I'm caught up as well. But, like, has anybody seen any of this? Sandman31 <laughs> saw both days. Well, I'll right. ask him. How was it, Sandman? <laughs> 
Let's see what he has to say. All right. How is he doing in his Voices of Wrestling prediction contest with Chris Samsa? Who are you talking about? Sandman? A, uh, no, no. I'm just giving him time to respond here. What does he say? Night one was excellent, says a different guy. Both were great. All right. I've seen both days. That doesn't help me. Uh, no, no. Do you have an opinion? Yes. This sounds like a very, very exciting G1. Well, Pretty good two days, says Sandman. Like Shingo versus Naito on night one. So Naito wasn't doing the coming to America thing where he just didn't try it all and looked terrible? That's good. Well, we don't know that yet. David Finley versus Suji was really good, says Brian Rose. A little from column A and a little from column B, this person says. Uh -huh, there's always one. Shingo versus Naito was like classic tragedy, the downfall of a god. Except Naito loses every match so far. He, no, may, he may lose again tonight. It may have been also how he looked. Because you know Shingo can still go, and that's one thing Naito really can't do anymore, at least not in how people want to try to remember him. All right, so it seems that Takeshita versus Suji was the best match so far. I did hear that was really, really good. I'm going to try to watch some of it later. the best of anybody in this thing so far. We'll see how it goes. I, I like the fact Naito's that Oleg toast. Bolton is you know, getting wins. I was surprised that Callum Newman did, but this is a transition year, obviously, for New Japan Pro Wrestling. And the big thing seven months into the year is how much progress have they really made with any of their guys? You know, forget about what you saw on Forbidden Door. You know, they really haven't. So for Suji and Umino and Narita and Uemura, this was going to be a big tournament for them, but also for guys like Hanare, for guys like Callum Newman, who they obviously have eyes on really doing something with, and they've gotten him off to a good start. So, again, we'll see how everything shakes out by the end. But one thing is for sure, I think as we get closer to January 4th in the Tokyo Dome, somebody has taken that belt off of Naito. I think they have to do that. And whether it's Yoda Suji or Zack Sabre Jr. or pick somebody, Takeshita, I don't care who you think, it's going to have to come off of them. You know, as I look at this right here, Zack Sabre Jr. is leading the A block. Well, he's tied with Evil. He's got four points. It's only two days in. And uh, Yuya Uemura is leading the B block with four points. And I guess Zack Sabre Jr. is kind of considered the favorite for this thing. But the fact that he's doing so well so early... I think I'm gonna. You know what my prediction is for the G1 this year? What's that? It's gonna be won by Yoda Suji. Yeah, yeah, I I believe that as well too. That's my Adam, that's my prediction here. Yeah, I'm in my big audio nightmare. We've been doing a G1 preview now for 20 years, however long we've been on this website, and this is a different year. They have a little spin on it in the fact that six people are gonna have a chance to reach the finals because they are doing a block semifinal and then you will go on whoever wins that will go on and you know be in the mix so it goes from six to four to two so you can have six different guys get in there and people start off slow people start off hot and you know things change by the end but they do have some drama built into the end there because i i don't know if zach saber jr i know a lot of people would like to see him get a title shot and maybe he will but the reality is, I don't think that that's big enough for New Japan for the Tokyo Dome. I really, really don't compared to putting over one of these young guys who at some point has got to be put over on top and given a shot. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.